All right, I had a little break there. So, this particular chart has just the three minors and the three majors on it. And I want to show you. We can't seem to get the, ma uh, the minors there. There we go. Starting on the minors. Okay, let's start on the majors. Okay. And then we'll go to the minors. So you can put them all three on the same chart. <clears throat> What's that mean? It means that they're all the same. They're all the same. So just like on piano with the majors, I go C, F, G. Okay, or you'd go E, A, B. Slipped off that accidental, accidentally. <clears throat> so, um, these are the same, the same intervals, right? And then with the minors, it's the same. Okay, so you can put them all on the same chart and do, you know, just do with the root, it'd be you follow the white notes, root three, five, root three, five. For the fourth, now is a gray. Now, these colors are relevant, uh, these particular ones, the, uh, in our discussion, what we're gonna, when we're gonna get to the progressions, the five is gonna be like a pink color, because you can hardly see the five there, but do five, seven, two, five, seven, two, five, seven, two, five, seven, two, five warp, seven, to two. Okay, and then four would be start four, four to six to root okay so the roots gray now because it's part of a I colored the the um, the fourth arpeggio okay so from root to four straight up but then the it's gonna warp over to uh, the third all right it's actually the six Six is the third of the fourth, and then to root. All right, and the fifth, and, and you know, same thing there. <clears throat> Minors, believe it or not, this looks good, but how do you play it? Six goes to root three, six root three goes to five to seven three five. So this is the Dorian is the second one start way up here to the two now to the four is a minor but it's going to warp over so it's going to be one of these tic-tac-toe things see how you get a different shape once it warps three starting on the this three we might make it because the last one's going to be the seven i don't think we're going to get there we're not going to get to that seven, but you can start it on any string. So starting from this uh, E would be three, five, seven. Now I want to go straight up for a three, but there's a warp there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back over this this way for that for that um, octave rather, and just start it again. Right, so you can they're all the same <clears throat> when you're talking about triads they're not the same when you're adding in uh, if you do them pentatonically are are they the same that would be a good exercise but they're certainly different with the with the uh, the scales all right because let's look at the uh, major all right, let's look at the pentatonic for uh, root now the pentatonic okay the pentatonics are the same in in minor it's I don't think they're the same because uh, there's a half step and a whole step difference but the major pentatonics are the same all right but the minors are different
hear that half step. They're different, but that's just got feeling. So <clears throat> that's why pentatonics is mostly a major study. When you do the pentatonic scales, in order to get, when I mix the C pentatonic and that F and that G, I get a, pentaton a, a diatonic scale. There's a string in the way of my note. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at the chart now. Maybe have, we're gonna learn a little something and pick up the pace here. So yesterday we were talking about this, uh, this part of the chart here. We're done with all the, all the you know, uh, Homer kind of stuff. Now, <clears throat> the most important thing to re first remember about the chart is the cage system. All right, so we have C. If you have a C um, chord, all right, if you go one up on that, it's gonna be the A, chord, a shape of that C because that A came from. Okay, so open would be, pretend my finger's your fret now, right? But if you take it up to the next C in that same shape, so it's all about shapes, all right? That's the magic chart right there. And then the G shape, I can play the... So the A shape is pentatonically. That's why pentatonics are good. They kind of they kind of frame out the chord. So whereas an A shape chord is like so it would be That's it. When you play the A-shaped pentatonic, you can see the chord and the open string, the strings that are being played when you play an A-shaped chord are the top of the pentatonic, the higher part of the pentatonic scale. Where you put your fingers are on the, are the top part. Okay. Now in this in this situation, actually no, the the uh, the pentatonic scale is is in the top part, but where you put your fingers is always the top part of the pentatonic scale, and it's the bottom part of the next pentatonic scale. So when, the way that A would go to G, the G part would connect like this. See that A-shaped chord is the is the top part of the pentatonic shape below it. But it's the bottom part of the pentatonic shape above it. So you can use those relationships. <clears throat> The magic chart just makes it easy to find where you're at. If you're playing a D or something, a, 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 an F-shaped D, a D-shaped F. Sometimes I get confused, you know, or you know, you can get confused. Okay, I'm playing an F, but it's a D shape. Wait a minute, I'm confused. If I'm going to go, uh, say, I want to go to a, a a G from that F, you know. Well, that G would be above it, right? In the same shape. But what if I want to change shapes? I don't want to just go. We want to play that.